It's the National Football League presented by EA Sports. Today, we've got a good NFC matchup on tap between the Tampa Bay Buccaneers and the Los Angeles Rams. On the return, it's Simba Webster. And he'll take it up past the 25 to the 26-yard line. Here's a Los Angeles offense as they get set to take possession. At their own 26-yard line. Golf on first down. And his first pass here is going to fall incomplete. Got out of the pocket. Didn't look like he had anybody open, Charles, so just gets rid of it. And a good play by him. If no one's open and you don't have a running lane that you want to take, make the right choice. Get rid of it. Live to fight another down. Once again, they'll come up on the 26-yard line, second and 10. From the gun, here's Golf. Got a man open, it's Tyler Higby. And down he goes, but he takes it up to the 40. Give him 14 on that one, and a first down. Partner, it's a lot of fun watching the NFL now, isn't it? Because when the big fellow runs routes, it used to be when we were kids, he'd run about three different routes, and that was it. Now he can run anything and catch the balls we just saw there. On first and 10, gone. He'll get this to Akers out of the backfield. Nothing on that one. It'll be second down. Well, that was a simple throw and catch, but even with that completion, zero yards gained, so they're behind schedule on down and distance. I think they were hoping to get it to him. He could make a man or two miss, but that window closed quickly. Had the completed pass, but for no gain, stopped right at the line, so it's second and ten. Go off throwing again. Receiver, it's Robert Woods. And he'll be taken down, but not before he works it past the 50. Give him 14 on that one and a first down. So he obviously read man coverage there, partner. And he got downfield, broke down the defender, made him think. By that yeah, he made him think he was going to run a different route. Probably thought he was going to take it upfield. Then he curls back inside for the completion. And that play will go nowhere. Losing yardage back near midfield at the 49. He was coming in to put a lick on him was Levante David. Sometimes you just sit back and marvel at what he can do defensively. Speed, strength, quickness. He's the whole package. And that package just wrapped up the runner for a loss. Now on second and 13. Goff. They'll get this one to Cup complete. That catch good for five. It's third down. Well, if you do read man coverage, Brandon, the drag route's a pretty good one to run against it because you're running away from people on it. And now on third down, they'll need to get it to the 36 to pick up the first. A shotgun snap for goal. A throw complete to Cam Akers. And he gets this only to the 41. Not near enough for the first. That's going to bring up fourth down. Only a gain of two there. And they're getting him involved early. You feel like they saw something on tape, or they just have a sense with him because he's had a good week of practice or something in that area. But they want him involved, just as you said. They want him to touch it either in the running game or the passing game, but they must like the matchups they're getting. So this will be accepted as it moves the offense backwards. So the special teams penalty cost some yardage there as they come out on first and ten. Brady gives this one off to Jones. And nothing doing. He's immediately taken down at the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play there. Second down. And as a defensive end, getting off the ball quickly, swarming to the football, making a tackle. That's what we saw right there. Yeah, that's what their job is. And really, a lot of the time, they have to throttle back a little bit in the run game because you know those defensive ends. They're like in a sprinter stance. They're just headed straight for the quarterback. That was good recognition on that play to hold them to no gain. 
Nine yards, and that leaves him just short, so it'll be third and less than a yard. When you run a screen pass really well, you got to like the look of it because so many parts come together to make it work well. The offensive linemen where they're faking people out, the back slipping out there, catching the football, then all of them going together as one unit downfield. A really nice pickup. They'll try and run for it with Jones. And he'll lose yardage here back to the 15. Losing four yards that time. And now it's fourth down. Now so much for picking it up on the ground on third down. Third play of the drive in this defense showing strong early. I wonder how much of that was scouting. I wonder how much of that was a gut feeling like, okay, let's just go ahead and sell out here and get after them thinking they're going to run the football and stuff them early because they've now set the tone. They've set a precedent right here. If you're going to try and run the ball against us, it could be hard going throughout this game. So the Rams coming back onto the field, their second drive of the game. They punted last time they had it. What steps, Charles, do you think they have to take to make sure they don't do that again? Well, let's just go to the football 101, the trade expression 101. Win first down. Make five, six, seven yards on first down and make it a second and three, second and manageable. Keep accumulating first downs that way. Keep moving the football. You don't want to get behind the sticks because then the defense has the advantage. celebrating the guys who just gave up that play no score after one on EA Sports On first down, they'll start out with Akers. They'll be tackled shy of the 35. The power move there couldn't buy him much space. Antoine Winfield up from the secondary with the tackle. Typically, we think it's the strong safeties that are better tacklers, especially closer to the line of scrimmage amidst traffic. But in this case, how about the free safety coming up and making the big-time play? They'll run this with Akers. And the hole closes quickly. He gets it across the 35 to the 36-yard line. Give him three yards on the run. Now they'll need to draw him something good here on third and 13. Some of these play calls, I think they're a little conservative. But you know me, because it's easy to sit up in this booth, right, and make all the calls and, and think I'm going to be correct. But I would like to see them open things up, because otherwise this defense is going to gang up on the run and set them down. And that will be incomplete. The passing game not in sync here early. And now it's fourth down. Two drives won't tell the story of this game, but you absolutely have to like how this defense has played thus far. They have yet to allow this offense to get untracked in this one. So on fourth down, here's Johnny Hecker to punt it away. Back deep, Jadon Mickens. Tampa Bay, they're getting ready to set up shop here for their second drive. They've been playing the field position game thus far. No score, second quarter as they come up on first and ten. Shotgun now for Brady. Quickly to Gronkowski, that's caught. And he's got it past the 30 before he's hit and dropped. A quick first down pickup. Good start after going three and out on their opening drive. And I put my first tally mark next to the Brady to Gronk counter here. I think it may be the first of many because once they get going, look out. Things tend to snowball. Tom Brady trusts Gronk as much as any receiver I think he's thrown to in his career. And it's evident and when you see that. And that's saying something. That's saying something right there. But he's earned it. And he slips up past the 45 before being tackled. It's a gain of 16, first down Tampa Bay. I think they like this drive a little bit better there, partner. Running game helping out, picking up some of the slack. Because remember the last drive, they went three and out. Back-to-back -back good plays have them on the move on first down. From the gun, it's Brady. 
And he'll get that to Fournette complete. The completion, but they go in the wrong direction. A loss of yards, and now they're dealing with a second and long. If you're a selfish player and you're throwing the ball, you're cool with the completion. Maybe not so cool with the yardage loss, though, huh? Yeah, you went you went backwards on the yardage. Hey, it kind of works like a sack for the defense there. Yeah, it's a really big play for them, right? Able to figure it out, sniff it out, and finish it off. Brady's throw there complete. And down he goes at the 45 after a pickup of nine. Antonio Brown. A nine-yard gain on the play. And it's third down. Coming up to the line, and they will need to run another play here before the two-minute warning. On third down, here's Jones. And brought down, but not before he was able to break the tackle, and the extra effort moves the sticks. Three yards there, good enough to keep the drive moving. First down, Tampa Bay. First and ten, here's Brady. There's the Penn State man, it's Chris Godwin. And they're able to get this one past the 30 to the 25-yard line. It's 17 yards on the play and a Buccaneer first down. And he went in route there from the slot for the completion. Love how he runs his routes because it's all setting up your defender. Give him a little something one way, take it the other way. Head and shoulder fake. Sometimes you make one step to the outside, then break it inside. Really well run route. And down inside the 15, shy of the 10. Another nice gain. That's now 30 yards between those last two plays. They sure put the coverage guys in a stress on that one. They thought they were going deep. Ends up curling inside for a nice chunk of yardage. From down at the 12, it's first and 10. Working from the gun, it's Brady. This is caught, Gronkowski. Now the Bucks going to use the first of their timeouts as they'll stop it with just over a minute to go before halftime. They'll break the huddle and come out with four receivers, three of them to the right side, second and seven. Brady to throw again. This into the hands of his running back, Ronald Jones. And it looks like he'll be just a yard shy of the five here as he's out at the six. It'll be a three-yard gain, and that'll bring up a third down. That might feel like a little bit of a lost opportunity there for the offense because the defense brought pressure that time. And sometimes against that, you can get out to your running back, and it can turn into a big gain downfield. But what a nice job they did getting to him quickly and holding him to a short gain. And it's caught at the seven-yard line. Now a look at Smith. Not sure exactly what happened, but he's still down. While the training staff works on him, we'll step aside and be right back. Fourth down, Ryan Suckup now for the Buccaneer field goal. A 23-yard attempt. And it's a fake. He's going to throw it. That's complete right around the eight. They pass up the three, fake it. It doesn't work. And the Rams are going to take possession of the turnover on downs. Well, I see what they were trying to do there. You pop up your holder, roll him out. You got the option to run or pass. This didn't work. Not at all. The communication was excellent defensively to make sure that receivers were covered as they escaped from the line of scrimmage because that's supposed to be a surprise to everyone, and that's how they get free. People forget their assignments on defense. That didn't happen. And think about the guy rolling out with the football looking for an open person. No one there. It was because that gap between you and defenders now is going to close and close quickly.
Goff on first down. They'll set up the screen here to Akers. And he'll get this up to the 30-yard line. The Rams going to go ahead and use the first of their timeouts as they'll stop it with a little over 30 seconds to go in the first half of play. Back-to-back -back good plays have them on the move on first down. Out of the gun, Goff gets this into the hands of the tight end, Higby. Now the Rams will signal for a timeout, their second, as they'll stop it with 27 seconds remaining here in the second quarter. This offense finding its legs now. Here's another first and ten. Again, golf. Comes out here they hit, but they'll say it's incomplete. Intended target was Cam Akers, and now it's second down. Certainly appeared to take away his first read, and by the time he tried to look elsewhere and find an open target, the coverage was too good. That one falls incomplete. An incomplete pass on first down. That leads to a second and ten. Throwing again is gone. Throwing over the middle, but it's incomplete. Robert Woods, former USC man, the intended target, and it's third down. They've been playing sound fundamental defense thus far and able to keep this offense from creating a major dent on the scoreboard. Able to force the incompletion, but still waiting for that game-changing play. You feel like it's coming, the first sack, the first turnover. In a sense, they're playing old-school defense right now. The new-school defense is what you said, taking the ball away. Now he takes this one down almost all the way to the 30. Now a timeout signal for, and they'll get it with 10 seconds to go before halftime. The 32-yard line. So even though it's first down, here's the field goal unit on now to try to get three before halftime. This is a 49-yard attempt, right hash. And it bangs off the left upright and deflects away. It's no good. And this will remain a scoreless game. Well, that hollow metal sound is the bane of any kicker's existence. And here, that sound is going to keep our game scoreless. And you can see him give that body English as the ball was in the air. Come on, baby, come on. But no dice that time. The Buccaneers in good field position here to start out first and 10 at the 39-yard line. Going to air it out deep for Gronkowski. And this one is incomplete. So plenty of action on the field, but no action right now on the scoreboard, at least as of yet. Nothing, nothing is our score. As we send you to Orlando to check in with Jonathan Coachman at REA Sports Halftime Report. Coach, taking it about the one. And he takes this near the 25, just a little pass there. Call it the 26. Out come the Buccaneers. They'll have it first to start the third quarter. And we thought this game had the potential to be tight. Maybe not this tight, scoreless, as we start the third quarter. And I love the way you use the word tight. I'm going to take it a little bit different direction here because it's not just tight on the scoreboard. I think both offenses have been tight in how they've played this game. No one's been loose. No one's been free. They've got to find a way to make some plays, and I don't think you do it if you're really tight in everything that you're doing in the game. Micah Kaiser was in on the tackle. That was a pretty good job defensively to hold him to a two-yard run, but I've got to think this offensive line, they're asking their quarterback for a different type of a run, one that they rely on, one they have confidence in, one they feel like they can block. From the 29, Brady looking for Godwin, and he's got him complete. The reception good for seven. It's third down. When you see zone defense and you know you've got a drag route on as your primary call, you've got to be really careful as a passer about how far you let your guy go because he might wander into some tough coverage. The Rams go nickel here defensively on third. Now Jones. 
And he's going to have a first down as he's brought down at the 44-yard line. That's good for nine yards as they convert on the third down play. Brandon, what were they thinking on defense there? That looked like they were playing for the pass. That was third and short. Yeah, it was an easy pickup because they handed it to him. That was way too easy. Just looked like absolute confusion defensively. Not sure why they were in that set. Yeah, I'd say you should have a few men in the box there. That's complete to his receiver, Godwin. And he'll go down right around the 47 this time. Three yards the game there, second down. Good throw, good catch, but I really like the route. The drag and being able to run away from defenders, hard to stick with them for that long. Yeah, better against man than zone, or? Better against man, because now you're running away from someone, and you're not running into a defensive player in another zone. On second down, here's Fournette. And he's going to take this one across midfield and into Ram territory. And still about three yards shy of a first as the four-yard pickup brings it to third down. Well, if you're a football guy, that's a pretty run because everyone is in sync right there. Obviously, the guy carrying the ball, but how about the people up front? Leverage, athleticism, they created some nice space for him. Back to the ground, this time with Jones. And he will be very close to a first down, but I see the close fist of the referee, and that means fourth down. Well, they're hoping that the second half is better for him than the first half. They've got to find a way to get him going. He's a big part of their offense. Here's Bradley Pinion now, as he's on to punt for Tampa Bay. And they'll play keep away from the returner as this one will be marked out of bounds at the 13-yard line. Pretty good spot. Out come the Rams. They'll have it first here to begin the third quarter. There are zero points on the scoreboard for either side. It'll be interesting to see what adjustments were made. The defenses have obviously been great. So if you like defense, this is a classic game. This is what you're looking for. But now you're trying to figure out how to gain any type of an advantage on offense. Is it through a big chunk play that they haven't seen before? Or is it just running your regular offense and running it better, trying to create an opportunity? We'll see which avenue they choose to go down. 15 yards is the pick up there, and the drive starting very nicely. First down. That's pretty much mean potatoes right there, wasn't it? Just go right at them and let your big horse charge up the middle. Not too fancy there, was it? Nothing fancy at all, challenging that defense. And on that go-around, the offense won the challenge. Throwing on first down, but this one winds up to be incomplete. As his old brain remembers, when I see five wide receivers on the field as a defender, I know the ball's coming out hot. They expected it and got there and popped it free. So now they'll come up on second and 10, once again from the 28. Goff now looks to throw. Got a man over the middle, it's Woods. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. Give him 14 on that one, and a first down. That was a nicely run slant route, and what the receiver's trying to do is make the defender think he's going upfield for a deeper route and then breaks it off, usually after about three to four steps, and cuts towards the middle of the field. And now what he's trying to do is use his body to keep the defender away from the football and get the quarterback a really nice target. Pass incomplete. He was out there waving his arms, saying, throw it here, dropped it, not a good look. Well, all I can do is just look at him with contempt on that one. As a defensive back, I'm saying, not as an announcer. Just like, really? A little bit of a diva look, isn't it? Yeah, very much so, because I think what happens is he just had too much time to think. He's wide open now. Here comes the ball, and he doesn't concentrate and drops it. Ball play action to Akers. Here's Goff. And he almost intercepted it. They haven't picked a ball off yet. That probably should have been their first. And it's third down now. Pretty nice coverage there, but a missed opportunity for an interception. Let's face it, a lot of these defenders, they've got it all. Speed, athleticism, hands, a little bit questionable. Now they face a third and ten after back-to-back -back incompletions. To the air again. Goal. And down he goes. A Buccaneer sack. And down can sue with a sack. We've seen that a ton since he entered the league in 2010. They were trying to set up that screen, trying to get that screen to formulate. Took too long. Ends up taking a sack, and that leads you to a couple of other questions. Number one, why don't you just get rid of the football near the screen, guys, so that you don't take an interception. But really, the big one, they just took everything away, and he was really kind of flummoxed on that play and ended up taking the sack. 
That'll be a 44-yard boot, just a yard on the return as he's covered up quickly. And the Bucs will get ready to go on offense. Back now comes Tampa Bay. And Charles, we've seen almost three full quarters now, and neither offense can really get it going. Neither has hit the end zone, and neither side seemingly can make that big play. But the game hasn't been devoid of action because these two defenses, they've taken over and they've slugged it out. But I think you're exactly right. We're at that stage of the game now where one of these offenses, if they make a big play, that could be the difference. A gain of 11 to kick off the drive, and it's a quick first down. Back now here on EA Sports as we are set to bring you the home stretch here, the fourth quarter. Going on first down is Brady. A quick pass here to Godwin. And brought down, but not before reaching the 45-yard line. 17 yards on the play and a Buccaneer first down. And partner in a tie game in the fourth quarter, you and I both know in the NFL, that's when you lean on your stars. And he came through with a nice catch right there. Back-to-back -back good plays have him on the move on first down. Operating from the gun. Brady, and the throw left sideline here is caught, but they'll rule it incomplete. Couldn't keep his feet in. Second down. Well, there's times when you see these catches that are made, and we just know the guys playing it are really wishing for college rules. Only need that one, one foot, foot down instead of two. It's awfully difficult on the sideline, isn't it? Brady's incompletion on first down leads to a second and ten. Throwing again. Brady. And his throw here is incomplete. Mike Evans, the one he was looking for. And it's third down. And that one off the mark behind him, incomplete. And 10 yards to go. The Bucks on third down. Two for five to this point. This is third and 10. Again, they'll throw with Brady. story of this game continuing to be the defenses because the offenses they're finding it difficult to establish any rhythm whatsoever i like how you come to us in praise of defense brandon because that's exactly right that was an incompletion force there but we've seen it throughout this game both of these defense coordinators they're a step ahead of their offensive counterparts It'll be a 39-yard punt, no return. And the Rams will be backed up deep to begin the drive as they take over first and 10. Golf will lead the Rams up here first and 10 at their own 12-yard line. Out of the gun, he'll throw. He'll get this to Akers here in the backfield. Akers, he coughs it up, and it's picked up by the Buccaneers. And he'll bring this one back to the 29. First and 10, and kind of tipping their hand at running the ball. Three tight ends are out there. Well, so much for the four-minute offense. They were trying to reduce the clock, get in position to win the game, and leave no time for them to come back and catch them. And guess what? They turned the ball over. Yeah, I mean, they had it all set up for themselves, and they let it get away. Well, partner, I know this type of running back. I mean, this size, this intensity, usually gets better as the game goes on. And I can just tell you from experience, the first few quarters, oh, you're eager. You come running up there. I'm going to tackle this guy. By the fourth quarter, you're coming up and thinking about it. And D-line wearing down fourth quarter. Yeah, that's not a guy they want to see consistently. And the Buccaneers are going to be looking at first and goal as they move this down to the four-yard line. A nice pickup of 14, and it moves the stick, sets up a first and goal. A field goal could get him the lead, but it might not be enough here as they come up on first and goal. From the gun, Brady. And eventually taken down. Samson Abuka give him the credit for the sack and a loss of 14 yards. Well, there's still time to rectify this situation because the silver lining, they took a sack on first and goal. But that close to the goal line, that still definitely hurts. First down, a bit of a disaster, and now on second and goal, back even further. 
Now he's got it. And he's into the end zone. Touchdown, Buccaneers. Tom Brady with a touchdown pass to Chris Godwin. And now they have taken a fourth quarter lead. So we have a score to report oh, after whoa, whoa, all. Whoa, whoa, How about whoa, whoa, this? Whoa, whoa, whoa. Stop the press. Yeah, I know. I just broke broadcasting 101. I cut it on my play-by-play -play guy. <laughs> but think about it this way. Marvin, our crack, uh, crack researcher, just handed us a note. We haven't had a scoreless tie in the NFL since 1943. 43. And we will not have history here in this one, part. Our first points of the game come in the fourth quarter. I don't think that either one of us saw this game unfolding this way when it all began. No, do. absolutely not. But, hey, now it's still just a one-score game, so don't go anywhere. A lot more to play for. Now Pinion with a kickoff honors following the touchdown. Fielded a couple yards into the end zone. And he'll be dropped at the 21-yard line. So bringing it out of the end zone proves not a good decision. Loses him about four yards. And now out on the field, here comes Los Angeles. And we've seen drive after drive come up empty for them. And they've yet to dent the scoreboard, yet still right in the middle of a one-score game. So this is where you absolutely have to forget everything that's happened in your previous drives. They don't matter right now. You just mentioned it. One-score game. This drive here can erase all of what happened previously. And he'll go down here at the 12-yard line. A big play there, 38 yards. From down at the 12, it's first and 10. To throw is Brady. He'll drop this underneath for Jones. And he's into the end zone for a Tampa Bay touchdown. A 12-yard touchdown grab. And the Bucs capitalize on the short field as they take it in for six. See, it seemed like they were so focused on the guys out wide, they forgot about him out of the backfield. That's a really good point because you've got to communicate, and oftentimes when you start counting receivers, that's exactly what you do. You start from the widest receiver, work your way inside. Who gets lost sometimes? The back in the backfield. That's exactly what happened there. And he got into the end zone. Following the touchdown now, it's Bradley Pinion on to kick this one away. On the return comes Webster. And a nice return sets him up pretty good here right at the 30-yard line. The Rams offense now, they get set and head back onto the field. And you're still in this game. I mean, yeah, you haven't scored. Offense obviously has struggled, but you're only two scores down, so all hope not lost. Not at all, because we're talking about the NFL, and teams can score fast in this league. Quick strikes, you're right back in it. You're exactly right, keeping hope alive. A shotgun snap for gone. Right side complete, that's Woods. He'll be tackled shy of the 35. The power move there couldn't buy him much space. Now after the completion, we're gonna get a timeout, an injured player. Well, he gets attended to, we'll step aside. Scrimmage the 24. This is second and six. Go 
off now to throw. And that is incomplete. A lot of force bearing down on him there. He could not hang on. It's third down. It's been clear in this matchup which side has been the more physical one. It's been this defense. And here's another example on that last play. The Rams on third down. They've only converted once in four tries. This will be third and six. From the gun, here's Goff. And able to find Higby, it's complete. And he's going to have a Rams first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. First down, Los Angeles there with a pickup of 14 yards. Second and ten. Brandon just marked that under the category of just not successful. Trying to throw the ball just didn't work on that one. Completed it. No yardage. Clock continuing to roll as the Rams try to get going again. Looking to throw again on second down. Golf. And this will be stopped at the 44. That one good for seven yards. The Rams going to go ahead and use the first of their timeouts as they'll get it with just under 90 seconds remaining. They're the box with an extra defender in the secondary now on third down. Secondary, so he dropped it off to the running back. That one ended up incomplete. And they're indeed going to go for it here on fourth down. So trailing here in the last quarter. Let's see how this plays out. They'll run for it with Akers. And nowhere to go. He's going to be stopped behind. They had to go for it with such little time remaining. And the Buccaneers' defense holds, and they get the football back. Good starting field position for them as they come up first and 10 on their side of midfield at the 47. They'll try and run some clock with Fournette. And he's going to take this one across midfield and into Ram territory. Now the Rams will signal for a timeout their second as they'll head to the sideline and talk over what to do next. And Tampa Bay trots out there now. And this one all over but the shouting, you might say. Now there's one timeout remaining defensively, but probably no real need to use it here. Yeah, the only time they would use it, strictly for pride. So they come up on second down, and they can get another run like we just saw. Would likely put an end to this thing. They'll try and run some clock here as they keep it on the ground. The Rams going to be forced to use their third and final timeout, and they'll be disappointed to have to burn one there after giving up the first down. Victory formation now for the Buccaneers. Down to a knee, they go. Brady will take a knee here, and that should just about do it. Brandon, I can just tell you from experience, there's nothing like pitching a shutout on defense, but even more so when it's a tight game. I mean, when every defense play is crucial and you don't give up any points, boy, they're going to feel awfully good about themselves after this one. Yeah, exactly. The offense wasn't humming, but hey, all they needed was 
Well, you can't score one point. All they needed was two. Well, you can't score two points on offense. All they needed was at least three. They got what they needed. They got what they needed. Exactly right. So fire the cannons. It's a victory here for Tampa Bay. And they did it in shutout fashion. Impressive. Would it be too bland of a statement to say they didn't have the greatest day offensively? I mean, uh, did you know, enough though. Did enough, but yeah, you're right. Most games, it wouldn't have been enough. So they've got to go into the locker room and applaud their defensive mates and say, guys, you really carried us today. We'll try and get you back next time. But as for today, you guys are nails out there. So that'll do it for us, for Charles Davis and all our crew. I'm Brandon Gunn. You've been watching the NFL on EA Sports. From Los Angeles, so long, everybody.